Today was a day that I did not think would ever come, but as we know, part of this year, unexpected news comes out each and every day, whether it be a part of our world at large, or even within our relatively small localized communities like sim racing. And this massive news has dropped a couple of days ago now on July 30th. Indoor AG today filed an application with Landshut Local Court to open insolvency proceedings due to over indebtedness and insolvency. For the American fan base out there that is wondering what in the world insolvency is, that is the German fancy word for bankruptcy, which comes at... I don't know if I'd really call it a surprise because of the murmurs and the rumors that we've been hearing for months now about the financial troubles that uh, Fnatic and Endor AG have been a part of for these couple of last years. And it's all been interesting, especially to read this pre press release to see what exactly has transpired to eventually come to this conclusion. In an attempt to restructure Endor AG in accordance with the German company Stabilization and Restructuring Act has failed. The reason for this was request by previous CEO and majority's shareholder to convene for an extraordinary general meeting in order to prevent a reorganization under the act without presenting a viable solution. Which is very interesting, because we've been hearing about these power struggles that Thomas Jackermeyer has been having with the uh, management board and how he was quote-unquote ousted as CEO. They got a new CEO in, but he's still the majority shareholder, so it's just incredibly messy. So it's interesting to see in writing how he was trying to save his own shares, really? Save his own fortune that he's created and then what they've come to him and said all right so how are you going to fix the company he just said i don't know just let me take it over again and this is the problem that i've been having through all of this is that fanatic came from well indoor ag specifically has been in the sim racing business for decades and had done a lot of really smart decisions to be able to get to the brand recognition that has been able for them to use the global pandemic as a jumping off board into a global company that is well known throughout the world for their products. But it's interesting to see that it was at that point that around the pandemic that all these management decisions on what to do next just seemed like that was based off of pandemic money that slowly started to dry up. So I got to keep in mind that this press release is made by Endor AG, not by the official German company reorganization stability group. So it's interesting to see the verbiage that's being used here. It's very obvious that the current management and the current CEO of Endor were very unimpressed with Thomas Jackemeyer's decisions. Because as the press, continue, press release continues to read, at the same time, negotiations with the majority shareholder, him, on a financial reorganization involving all shareholders have been taking place in recent weeks. However, these negotiations had to be broken off without result due to unrealistic demands. Interesting. Even more interesting, this is the part that I really wanted to get to, is the future of Endor AG to see what exactly is going to happen from here. The strategic investor Corsair then decided to not make any further payments from bridge financing as ongoing disruptions made a reorganization under the act impossible. 
The lending banks have also rejected further financing due to over indebtedness. Big problem. Super big problem. It only gets worse as the management board regrets that the negotiations with strategic investor Corsair, which were already at an advanced stage, could not be finalized. A further open-ended process to rescue the company is now being initiated as a part of the insolvency proceedings with the aim to reorganize the company and securing the land shut site and jobs. So that is the big thing that is that I don't want to discuss here is this part at this point is that even though Endor AG has filed for bankruptcy even though Corsair could not essentially rescue the company that fight is not over yet for them I think at this point Corsair is actually going to be playing a strategic lawn game here letting the insolvency proceedings continue so they might be able to acquire Corsair well since they might be able to acquire uh, Endor AG and Fnatic at a very discounted price which I think ultimately will happen because it just seems like Corsair is like the perfect company to partner with Fnatic to get Fnatic products a little bit more into like you know your local retailers i think corsair would be like the perfect partner to do that as the press release continues the management board is confident that the company will be taken over by an investor in due course of the insolvency proceedings at the same time the management board assumes that corsair is still interested in acquiring endor ag so kind of my thoughts there and that's really kind of the end of the press release that we had here is that you know, where do we go from here? And my thoughts are... I want to take a look back at some of the decisions that were made in recent memory that I found were rather questionable that were due to the influx of money from the pandemic. Somewhat recently, within the last couple of years, Endor AG had created a new headquarters, a massive project that included a go-kart track on the roof. Now, when you become a global leading brand, yes, you want to be able to flaunt off the fact that you are successful, that you have fortune. But when you come out of the gate and you spend that kind of money and you already have a significant amount of debt, you gotta start thinking, okay, so why? Furthermore, the other interesting decisions that I thought that um, had taken place was that due to being the age that we're in now with technology, you want to be able to partner with real world racing brands and racing championships for that matter to prove validity. So the fact that Fnatic partnered with, you know, I'm trying to remember the specific group, but basically creating the Fnatic Racing Series where you are able to race in actual GT3 cars on real world tracks and then hop in a sim using Fnatic products and race at the same tracks and each race, whether it be virtual or it be real, have the same amount of points. And I think that's awesome. It's like, that's, that's insanely cool to be able to prove that sim racing is in fact of that validity. But the fact that they seem to have to partner with every single championship out there, they've partnered with F1 for sure. They became an official partner with Gran Turismo, and thus with the Gran Turismo 7 World Series. They became a partner with the World Rally Championship, where they used their wheel in one of their actual cars. And it's just, the list goes on where it's like, each one of those, to become a title sponsor, 
means that you had to fork over a ton of money. I understand doing it for a couple of championships, sure. But to do it for all of them? I don't think you need to partner with every championship to prove validity. I think if you do one or two, I think you're probably okay. The other thing that kind of irked me as well is that it appears that Fanatic's R&D is not in the right mindset. Because ever since the release of the CSL DD, that was the perfect product for the perfect time. Showing revolutionary direct drive technology at a very cheap price where you're able to finally be able to get into sim racing with an exceptional product and with the QR1 system, you can, you know, order any type of wheel that they've had released for years on end. I think that was a great move. It really was. The struggle that I had seen from there is not really releasing new products that frequently. And whenever they did, it was new wheelbases. So if you think about it, you get a wheelbase, you get a pedal, and a wheel. You're in. You're in their ecosystem. What is something that you would imagine that you could do in order to increase profits? Well, you've got somebody into the ecosystem already, so now it's time to sell them accessories and accessories and accessories and add-ons and this and that and the other thing. They've already got the wheelbase, so sell them different types of pedals, sell them different types of like clutch pedals and, and you know, high dampening kits for their pedals. And then here's the big one in my mind, wheels, 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 and more wheels. You got to just continuously be refreshing those because I'm sitting here as a consumer. If Fnatic released a new wheel every three months, Man, I would love to have a collection of them on a wall behind me, and I would love to be able to have, like, for example, this uh, Subaru wheel here that's kind of like that, um, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm looking for here. It's kind of like that um, rectangular shape that doesn't have the cutout on, that's cut out on the top, and would love to have, like, more partnerships with real-world brands that have kind of like the McLaren wheel. That was a perfect idea of creating a partnership with a real world brand, creating a product that looks exactly like their wheel. And when you put it on your sim rig, you can drive that car in game and feel like you're actually driving the car. The thing that breaks immersion for me, not that I don't have triple screens or VR or whatever, is just the idea of just having the same wheel just creates an immense amount of immersion. Like having, you know, this the standard Gran Turismo wheel is fine, but whenever I throw on my formula wheel for a super formula or like a group one car, it's crazy what it does. And the thing with the wheels too is that I've been begging them for years, much like the rest of the community, to sell wheels with, like, screens, because that's what all the World Endurance Championship cars have. That's what all the F Formula One cars have. So you'd think that they'd be focused on developing something like that. They have been. That was the Bentley wheel. But it's been development so long that the wheel that was going to be used for the car is... Like, the car isn't in the championship anymore. So you've spent all this time and energy developing this this rim with the screen on it and you still can't sell it all the while Moza comes out of the woodwork and creates in my mind a replica of the wheel and they say here you go and it's like don't tease us for years on end to the point where it just doesn't happen just tell us when you're ready and that's kind of the biggest point to me is that they spent all this time in my mind, shadow dropping these products like 
new wheelbases. They've got the Club Sport DD and the Club Sport DD Plus, and they've been working on the QR2 system for years, but it's been it's been worked on for so long that you're now asking your consumers to break open their wheelbases to upgrade to your new system when that should have been ready before the pandemic. So it just seems like Fanatics R&D is just focused on wheelbases and focused on stuff that just, in the end of the day, doesn't matter because they weren't able to release it in a timely fashion. Think of how much more successful they would have been if they had the QR2 system already figured out. If they had the Bentley wheel already figured out, so then they could take that time and energy that they've been spending to make those wheels imply it to something new. I will admit they have released new wheels, but it's been in these bundles with these new wheel bases that are way too expensive. It's like if you offered the new Gran Turismo wheel that came with the Club Sport DD Plus, it's got a nice little OLED screen at the top to let you know what your gap is to first and second and all the rest of that. I would buy that in a heartbeat, but I'm not going to spend $1,300 for a wheelbase just so I can have the stupid $400, $500 wheel. Like, it's crazy. Long story short, I'm hoping, I really do, that something good can come with this. I'm hoping that it is going to be Corsair, because I rely... I respect the brand. I respect that they will come in and rework management, actually provide customer service, and understand that they need to get new wheels out soon, fast, quickly. Because if somebody else comes in, like some private equity firm, then Fnatic might as well be gone today. Because private equity is not going to help anybody. So, I'm hoping that Corsair comes in and does the right thing and is able to make something work. Because otherwise, if Moza is able to get some sort of compatibility with uh, PlayStation, then I might change the Moza or Logitech. Because if Fnatic's going to go away, then... There's no point in continuing to use the products. So, very interesting news. Again, share uh, down in the comment section what you guys think. If you are concerned as well, skeptical, if you're hopeful, i love to hear what you guys have to say down in the comment section below. Again, thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye!